Good morning everyone, good morning. Another lovely day in Kusamui. Well, today it is not sunny and it was raining in the morning. So I thought it's the best time for me to come out and go for a walk for a few minutes. So obviously you guys see my eye situation is getting better, but be honest with you, I'm almost done with going to a doctor here. It just like, I guess I have to go to Bangkok to get the proper, uh, you know, to get the proper doctor. Okay guys, one second, let me put my glass on and I have to clean my lenses too, one second. Yeah, what I was saying guys, sorry, I had to put my sunglasses on and clean the lens. So what I was saying, I'm done to go to doctor here, so I, I feel much, much better, but a little bit of redness left. So still, uh, I don't feel 100%. So I'm gonna go to Bangkok soon, hopefully next few days. And then I'm gonna go to doctor there. So probably it's just much, much, much better because here it's just, first of all, is every time that I'm going to doctor hospital here, just costing me fortune. And it seems to me they don't have no clue what they do. So I don't want to waste my money. I don't want to waste my energy anymore. So this is the situation, guys. And now because it's not sunny, so I'm just heading to the beach for a few minutes. Just go for a walk. And that's it, guys. This is, this is what I'm going to do. That's it. I'm not going to go to the doctor anymore here. Because I find that it's just useless. Just charging extra money and doing absolutely nothing. Thank you to Roy that let me know about uh, new immigration, Thai immigration policy has been changed. So let me give you guys some update because yesterday I was reading online. So uh, used to be only 53 countries that could come here uh, visa free, which means like you have to just show up with your passport and then you used to get 30 days visa. So. Canada, US, Europe, and a lot of other countries. But now, from 53 gone up to 97, if I'm not wrong, either 97 or 93. So, now a lot of other countries that people can come here, you know, just show up with your passport and you're gonna get 60 days visa. So instead of 30 days, you're gonna get 30 days. So, which is really helpful because I used to come here every 30 days and then I had to pay 1,900 baht to extend my visa but now it's just you come in with, and you're getting two months visa so which is much much better and it seems to me now there is another visa that you can stay 180 days and you can keep extending it for next 180 days for five years. So, so far there is no information about how much it's going to cost, but for people that they want to get long-term visa, and if they want to stay here for a long term, that's unbelievable option. And when I was reading online, this is first time happen in Thai immigration. And the reason is, I believe the Thai government is panicking because of uh, low season. And it is low season. I don't know why. Because last year, this time, I remember Thailand, it was more busy. Even today, I was checking the hotel prices because soon I'm going to Bangkok and I'm going to Pattaya. First, I'm going to go to... Uh, first, I'm going to go to... Uh, Bangkok for my eye and better doctor and then after that I'm gonna head to Pattaya because I don't have much time left holy shoot now I'm here and the rain started come on stop rain holy macaroni this is disgusting man okay let's see how far I can go so hopefully I can find a shelter somewhere if it's 
rain crazy. So what I was saying guys now, so yeah, the hotel prices in Pattaya and Bangkok is very low even here. So seems to me uh, Thai government is somehow panicking and coming up with all these easy options for a lot of people to come here. For example, China and India, they used to get the visa, but now it seems to me is visa free. So they have to just show up with their passport and get two months visa. So for people like me that keep going different places, I don't know, I hopefully, uh, once I travel to two more countries in Southeast Asia, Definitely, I want to move to South America. Uh, I believe I want to go and see Laos and Philippines. And from there, I'm done pretty much. I'm done with Southeast Asia. And I need a break from here. And I'm moving to Medellin, Colombia. And hopefully, again, depends. Hopefully, let's see what is the situation there in terms of safety and everything else so I can you know travel a few countries in South America but it seems to be Thai government is panicking and they're coming up with the really easy option for a lot of people to come and uh, travel in Thailand which is good you know good for their economy <laughs> so I hope because last time when I was here <laughs> guys because I have a few extensions on my passport and obviously a few stamps. When I was in the airport, so the immigration officer was questioning me that why I keep coming back. So I said to her, did I do anything wrong? She said, she was keep looking at me. So she repeat herself again. She said, why you keep coming back? So I was so tired and I was so serious and I don't like, because I don't do anything wrong, usually I'm, I play by the book, so I don't like nonsense questions. So I said, ma'am, did I do anything wrong? Because she was keep going through my, you know, passport pages and saw a lot of extension and a lot of stamps. So she asked me for the third time, so I raised my voice. I said, ma'am, did I do something wrong? Because she wasn't answering me. She was just repeating herself. And I saw the next immigration officer that's sitting next to her. She, she was looking at her. Like, okay, you're asking question and he's answering if he did something wrong, you know. I'm asking, okay, why are you questioning me? Did I do something wrong? And then she said, no. So I said, so, like, why are you asking me? She said, well, you keep coming back here. I said, Ma'am, you keep asking me and I'm telling you, did I something wrong? And then finally she stamped the passport because she was just making, she was asking me something that it just doesn't make sense, you know, like, okay, if you are staying over of your visa or do something wrong, yeah. But if you're not breaking the law, if you're not doing anything, like she was bored or something, she was questioning me. So even the next immigration officer that, you know, usually two of them sitting, and one of them was looking at the next one, the one that she was not answering my question, she was just repeating herself. So basically now, you don't need to go through this, all the nonsense, I guess. It's just making it much, much easier for people coming. So. I don't know why they're questioning if the Thai government welcoming more tourists more often to come here, especially good people, good people, you know, people that they're not causing any issue, people that they're not, you know, doing any crime or anything wrong, you know, they're on their own business, you know, somebody like me or million other like me. So if the Thai government welcoming and making it easier, Sometimes, you know, I don't understand why. Uh, I, well, maybe she was bored. Maybe she was looking at too much stamp on my passport. Anyway, so now it's getting much, much easier, guys. So it's good, good. If you're planning to come and visit, now is low season, guys. Like everywhere that I'm looking in Pattaya, here, Bangkok, 
price is very cheap so if you're planning to come visit here now is a good time guys if you want a peaceful time weather is nice everything is nice and the price is cheap so now is a good time why would you go somewhere that price is very high high season usually i choose to stay in somewhere that is low season because you know i pay less anyway Still guys my eye is just bothering me like now I'm st start walking like I can't feel it that it's just not 100% and I'm pushing myself but what can I do I don't have no other option and I don't want to go to doctor that they don't have no answer and they don't want to do anything they're telling you some nonsense so this is the situation of my eye guys <sighs> I don't know I don't know Okay, this is guys this is the bungalows that I saw online so there is a shared washroom and shared toilet so you have a room with the fan so there is no air conditioning but I believe it's like five ten dollars I'm not sure again you gotta double check this is in Lamar so there is only fan you have a public toilet and washroom so you have to share with other people but the price is only five to ten dollars so if you want a privacy like if you don't want to stay in somewhere that is you know sharing same room with other people if you want your own privacy it's a good option but the only thing is you don't have a, uh, you don't have obviously you have to share the toilet and the washroom with other people but the, your room is just, it is private, but you don't have no air conditioning. So that's the only thing. Alright guys, you see there's absolutely nobody at the beach. Just I saw two Russian ladies. Okay, this is a spot that first time when I came to Lamai, I went there. But let's go see there and then I gotta go back because I don't want to push myself too much and it's going to rain. But let's see that spot. John, I know you are a Lamai guy. I hope you'll enjoy this video, my friend. So. I know Lamai Beach is very lovely. I really agree with you and it is very peaceful and it's not crowded and I hope when you are back, I believe you said you're coming in June if I'm not wrong. So when you are back in Lamai, hopefully it's just a little bit more people so you can enjoy your time here. But again, depends, you know, a lot of people come in for quiet time. Like, I don't know, a lot of people just come in to get away from the winter and John is from Sweden, so he don't want to be there. And I, bl I don't blame you, my friend. Your guy's winter is just like Canadian winter and it just sucks. <laughs> and another thing is, guys, I am keep reading about situation in Canada as I said I watch the news Canada US and my home country that I born Iran so now 
87% of people in Canada angry of their government and I don't blame them it's just a nonsense I don't know what is going on now government of Canada is a useless individual they cannot build the housing but they bring million immigrants why are you crazy are you out of your mind if you don't have enough job for existing people if you don't have enough housing for existing people why are you bring in more immigrant Justin Trudeau is out of his mind this guy is a mental case I believe really he's a nutcase I don't know what is their policy although I know a lot of people moving out from Canada lots including me like for three years and I don't think I'm gonna go back anytime soon with this disgusting situation that happening people cannot rent people cannot get a decent job their income and their expenses just day and night prime rate is six percent you cannot buy anything people in credit card debt so and the government of Canada keep pumping money to different level of government to build housing but seems to me nothing happening it's just like useless government useless absolutely useless government the guy doesn't want to take control of anything anything imagine that how not case this guy is that even the wife left him last year I guess even the wife had enough of him like he cannot take charge of anything seriously he just he just keeps coming to you know different announcement that he's pumping money to build housing and that's a number one issue now in Canada people sleeping on the street and this nutcase open up the border bringing immigrants like why like why you don't have enough job you don't have enough housing so where are you going to put these people in it is unbelievable for example one of the scam in Canada is to bring Chinese and Indian students to to the university of your colleges and it was a program a few years ago I saw on TV that's pretty much a scam because selling university and college to foreigners and these kids coming not to go to school coming to get the job so it is just a, oops. oh this is a gym here hey how you doing how are you wow guys look at this this is a gym here last time when I was here it wasn't such a thing and he's exercising Oh man, this is really nice. There's pretty much everything here. <laughs> this is really, really cool. Yeah, man, it's just like I heard this on a daily basis from other travelers from Germany, from Australia, from New Zealand, everything. Everybody is complaining. I know the economy is messed up everywhere, but Canada is just uh, the guy is absolutely useless. Absolutely. One of the biggest issues that people suffering in Canada because of housing issue and because cost of putting roof over your head and your income doesn't doesn't make sense your income is here and housing prices here so let me tell you guys something I was in real estate all my life I started with selling with renovating with building everything I did that everything for 27 years so this is the situation 90% of the people I would say buying property in Canada based on mortgage 25 years 30 years and this government keep changing it between 30 years to 35 years whatever but the interest rate it was reasonable 
10 years ago, eight years ago, before goddamn Justin Trudeau. And income ratio and price of the house, it was making sense. So basically when you go into the bank, because I have my mortgage uh, license as well. So when you, when you go into the bank, obviously they want to see your income and your mortgage and cost of living. If it's just balanced out. Now, interest rate is for mortgage is like 7%, 8%. Cost of house, the same house that like 10 years ago it was like half a million, now one and a half million dollars. Interest rate it was 1.7%, now it's 7%. People income is not going up with the inflation rate. Minimum wage, for example, 10 years ago, it was like $14 or $13. Now it's $15. So imagine that for past like seven, eight years, inflation is going like this, cost of living like this, but your income going this much up. You know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So now my question is to these nut cases that run in the country, it's just the mental cases that based on what your border is open based on what you used to bring 250,000 immigrant qualified immigrant to the country and plus the refugees but now based on what you increase in this 2 million based on what so for example if you go to so many different part of Canada you see a lot of Chinese and Indian students. This is a bunch of rich kids that they're not coming to study. They're coming to live there. So basically they're getting, you know, just letter from university because there is a lot of company connected to this university and college. Pretty much is like business. Like a business just bringing these rich kids to the country. So why is affecting normal people in Canada? For example, I come across this kind of kids, 17, 18 years old, rich kids. They want to live next to university, best condominium, best apartment, and they don't care what is the fee is. They don't care because the money coming from the daddy and mommy. So they don't care. So, and for the normal individual that gets up in the morning, six o'clock, and coming back at six, seven o'clock, six days a week, or five days a week and they have a part-time job they cannot afford to pay that amount of rent because landlord rather to rent it to these kids that they don't have no budget it's like whatever I just I want to live in this building because it's next to my university and for that young professional that graduated from university and now they got their first job now they have a student loan now they have a lot of responsibility maybe they want to buy the first car maybe they want to save some money just impossible for them to live there it's just the country going like sideways i don't get it man and this morning i was reading and just make me so angry and the statistic shows 87 percent of the people extremely fed up with canadian government on all level of government because we have three level of government and all of them one to the next it just corruption after corruption it's just the nonsense and i know like i was getting for a zoning i was deal with different level of government when i was building when i was renovating it just corruption after corruption seriously and I hope you guys have a little bit of information about because when I come across one thing it's just laughable like obviously you come across a lot of travelers these days a lot of people that especially young people young young people get fed up with the you know European lifestyle North American lifestyle and this is the kid that really established I'm like 
you know, come across somebody in Bali, the guy is a CEO of his company, but he don't want to stay in the US. He's just planning to move his business to Bangkok because everybody fed up with the taxes, with the cost of living and everything else. Anyway, long story short, so when I'm talking and people say, where are you from? Canada, especially European people, they think Canada is just like a lot of people. Like people think Canada is just like really safe and really good country to live. It's just absolutely not. First of all, we don't have no safety. If you don't believe me, just go on CP24. From three news, two and a half of them is just like somebody killed somebody. You know, just a crime after crime. And oh, this gym is really nice. I really like it. <laughs> hey, how you doing? How are you? Yeah. <laughs> enjoying the gym? <laughs> What's that? I'm saying enjoying the gym? Yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> So, yeah, people think, oh, well, Canada is very safe. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just go online and just take a look at the news, what is happening in Canada. I wish I had my eye. I could exercise a little bit here. Unfortunately, I don't feel good. Hello, Hello. Sabarika, good morning. <laughs> Look at this lady. It's a very nice place for a massage. You just next to water, so peaceful, and you can get a lovely massage. Guys, take a look at the, some of the villa right there. It's just lovely, man. And some of this villa you just keep popping up, keep growing. And, that's really nice. But guys, most of the hotel is absolutely empty. Absolutely. Like there, is, there is nobody. Even in my hotel, guys. This hotel is very nice hotel and usually is booked. But I would say 80% of my hotel is empty now. Nobody's there. Yeah, that's why I guess Thai government is panicking and coming up with all this easy travel. So imagine that from 53 countries that used to have, you know, free uh, free visa on arrival, now it's gone up to 93. That's a, like roughly 40% increase. That's big. And I was reading online, this is the first time that Thai government coming up with so much easy changes for you know traveling in thailand especially the one that everybody shocked and uh, this is the expert that i saw online some of them thai lawyer and stuff like that the, the best one everybody says that 180 days because you can stay here for five years and you can keep extending your visa every 180 days so no drama you have 66 months six months and then you can extend it for next six months that's fantastic but one thing that i heard in thailand they keep changing it so now it's easy if it gets a little bit crowded probably they're going to change it back so that's the problem they keep changing it it's just like turkey turkey is the same thing i was buying a house in turkey like i went three years ago when i left canada my first destination was Turkey Alanya. So I went there and seriously I was considering to buy an apartment. And I went there and I saw so many apartments in different parts. Alanya, Antalya, Fethiye. And I love that region. But I won't do it anymore. Because one of the reasons is there is absolutely no database. You don't know what you're buying. You don't know who, what is the price of what. So. But now the price is so increased and another issue in Turkey, they keep changing their policy, you know, immigration policy. One day they say, oh, well, everybody can buy a house here. And the next day they say, no, you cannot buy it. So I don't like it. So when I find out this is a nonsense that I have to deal with, 
And usually when you buy an apartment, you know, or if you buy any real estate, uh, real estate is not like a stock market, guys. When you buy a real estate, and I truly believe that, regardless, any, anywhere, this is a standard policy. You need to at least hold the property for five years if you want to have a little bit of profit. So even if you can hold it more than five years is good, but minimum if you want to make some profit is a minimum is five years. So that's a standard kind of things. So, and because of all this nonsense policy change that they have in Turkey, you know, one day come and buy, the next day we're not going to give you visa, you have to leave, or you cannot buy it, or you cannot do this. And another nasty things in Turkey, guys, like if you're watching this, new, this, this video, one thing that I find is just one of the most nastiest things. This is the situation in Turkey when you're buying a property. You can buy the property, but you cannot sell it to another foreigner. You have to sell it to local people. Imagine that, how bad it is. And the reason you're going to ask why, because as a foreigner, usually you pay inflated rate. So you're not paying for the normal price. You pay more than Turkish people. But when you're selling it, a lot of Turkish people cannot afford to pay, you know, the asking price. For example, you hold the property for five years, obviously you want to make some profit. But now, for normal Turkish people, it's just hard to pay for it. So your best option is another foreigner to come and buy your property. But the Canadian and Turkish government says, no, 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 no. You can buy it, but you have to sell it to locals. So imagine that how nasty that game is. So you buy it for inflated price. Now you want to keep the pri property for five years. Now you need the money. You want to flip it. You want to make some profit. And the government says, no, 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 no. You have to sell it to local person. And the local person won't pay that because they don't have that money to pay. So that's why just really be careful when you buy a property somewhere that you don't know the law. You need to read, you don't need to be, you know, listen to real estate agent nonsense sometimes. You have to really uh, get as much as information you could, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Somebody clap, how about you? <laughs> so this is the situation guys, so that's why. Hello, somebody clap. What a beautiful weather. <laughs> and nobody here. <laughs> Which is better. <laughs> so, yeah guys, that's why I didn't buy it. That's why I didn't buy the property. And another thing is, and then I went to Cyprus. I went to north of Cyprus to buy an apartment. Again, I went through a lot of researches and everything else. Okay, the one thing that in north of Cyprus, obviously again depends on the location, if you want to stay in the city or not. So I find one location, I don't remember, the real estate they just showed me, yeah, it was lovely guys, lovely. Next to water, beautiful, quiet. But in Cyprus there is no public transportation whatsoever, whatsoever. No buses, no nothing. You pay unbelievable fee on euros for taxi. I paid from airport, no, from my hotel to airport roughly $75 Canadian for roughly a 20, 25 minutes drive, 30 minutes. So basically absolutely no transportation. So obviously, you need a car and when i was there price it was good but again there is absolutely no database you know like i'm sure if you're watching this video from europe or north america i don't know how's real estate in europe but in, in us and canada there's a database for example you want to buy this bungalow right here and obviously the next bungalow is the same thing Maybe the condition, it would be different, but it's the same. Same location, same bungalow, same size. 
maybe some of them have some upgrade or not but the thing is you can't find out how many times this property is sold for what price when which date all of them is a public information you can request that from your real estate agent and never mind that now you can even as a public you can have an access a few years ago you had to request this from your real estate agent but now even you can find it by yourself so you can say oh well okay the price of this property may be ten thousand dollars more but because of the upgrade maybe the condition is better maybe they did some renovation so it's really easy to you know to see what is the market value but in Cyprus in Turkey and even here I heard there's no database so somebody says I want to sell my property for half a million who cares that's my price so you don't know what is going on on the next door you know like you don't know what was the somebody paid next door or you know in the building for the same floor plan and same everything you know what was the real actual prices so that's why you need to be very careful when you're buying a property in this kind of country that they don't have absolutely no database and the reason that I didn't buy a property in Turkey or north of Cyprus I was asking a real estate agent okay you're showing me this house and you're telling me it's like okay hundred thousand it wasn't a house it wasn't up it was an apartment you know like one bedroom apartment so you're telling me seventy five thousand or hundred thousand at that time it was very really cheap now I'm sure the price gone up so much I'm talking about three years ago so after COVID price was very reasonable I was looking at brand new one of one bedroom apartment really it's teeny tiny not too big but beautiful view brand new apartment brand new building for roughly seventy thousand seventy five thousand dollars Canadian so I was saying okay okay that's fine seventy five but do you know how much is the next door sold like two days ago no I don't know how do I know what do you mean how do I know how do I know you're telling me I'm here for next past two weeks you're telling me this is 75,000 how do I know this is a real price how do I know the next door price so if you come across something like that if you're planning to move you know that's a really big decision and you have to do a lot of due diligence because otherwise you cannot see anything they don't they won't show you anything because they don't have no database they don't have an access or they don't want to show you I don't know <clears throat> to me based on my research better to ha keep your property in your own country rent it out and come and rent somewhere that you don't know the law you don't know how to sell them you don't know if there is a lot of questions behind it for example here you can buy condominium as a freehold but if you want to buy property you have to open up your own company because it's a leasehold so like if really if you want to have a better time in the future without dealing with the nonsense of you know if you did something wrong or right you better to just rent out your property in your home country and just rent somewhere you know because it's easier you can ch keep changing your place every year and you don't need to worry about resale value and all the drama that comes with that There's a lot of people in the water, not a lot, I mean, in the whole beach I don't see more than 50 people. And this jet ski guy is just one individual. Thanks God it didn't rain so 
Now I can walk as much as I can to show you guys the low season in Lamai Beach. How quiet it is. So this is another hotel that is next to Lamai Beach called Zara Resort. Um, I don't know. I, I, you should read the review first. Zara Beach Resort. Uh, again, usually I'm not saying always accurate when you read in these online reviews, but usually I go with the online reviews, and that's sometimes you know accurate information, sometimes not. But they don't have really good reviews. So. But it's next to the water. So if you want to stay next to the beach. Obviously there is a lot of resort here next to the beach. And this is one of them too. Okay guys. So the sun is coming out. And I got to go back. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys like this video. And see you guys on the next video. Cheers.